Thank you for joining us today for a Learning and Growing webinar series, Improving Students' Experiences of Course Transitions Using Hawks Learning Software. Our presenter today is Ina Tokar of Dwight Inglewood School. My name is Sidra and I'll be your moderator for Hawks Learning. We will have a live Q&A session after the presentation, so please enter any questions you have into the Q&A module as we go and we'll be sure to answer them at the end. I will now hand it over to our presenter. Thank you. So um, I have been using Hawks software for many years in different capacities. I have used it in a college university setting. I've used it at a Fashion Institute of Technology of New York City. I have used it at the City College in New York City. And I have used it at a couple of different uh, high schools um, in New York and New Jersey. Um, so we have you, me and my colleagues, so we have used it in various, uh, you know, for various purposes. And today specifically, I wanted to talk about using Hawks uh, software for helping students transition between the courses um, and also improving their outcomes. So I'm going to share my presentation. All right, so we're talking about improving student experiences, of course, transitions using Hawks software. So sorry, I, okay. So the software allows assignments of universal homework, uh, you know, um, across different sections and allows some flexibility to instructors. So as a lead instructor in my role, I would, uh, I would set up the software to be able to be managed either by me. So depending on how you want to do it, you can, you can limit instructors and say, you know what, I don't want anybody to be changing my settings. I want to make sure that students in different classes and different settings will perform exactly the same assignments. Uh, or if you think that your instructors need flexibility or your sections need flexibility. Maybe you have a section that's another section versus a regular section or a section that is a full year versus half a year. So you need to change the material and do it in a different, with a different speed, then you can allow for that flexibility. Uh, there is a learning section, we'll talk about that, that helps students master concepts. And um, what's really nice about it is that you can allow the software to generate infinitely many problems and allow students infinitely many tries. So what does it look like? Obviously, nobody wants to you know, try anything infinitely. Um, but when you're setting up a section of Hawks and you want your students to master something, and I'm going to show a couple of slides later what it looks like. You want the students to master certain types of problems. And you can set up your software in a way that you can either reset the whole assignment. If the student is not doing well, you as an instructor can decide, I want my students to start over. Or you can allow your student try a particular type of a question more than one time, you know, obviously with an idea that they will learn it as they're going along, either using the uh, learning section and learning and practice section, or you can um, you know, also send them, you have a choice as to where then so you send them, you can also send them to the reading materials to the book that is attached. So after the students learned and practiced and you know certified through various amount of content you have um, you have an ability to set up electronic tests and it will um, it will generate every individual test for every student as they're taking it in a classroom setting let's just say or they're taking it in different classroom settings or even during uh, COVID if you had to do it at home for them every test would be randomized using random numbers and also the order would be randomized if you allow for that. So this prevents uh, students from sharing their answers and the solutions. 
So in terms of transitions, I have, you know, me and my colleagues, we used a lot of it to transition between pre-calculus into calculus. And um, at one of the schools, actually at a couple of schools and universities, sometimes students have long breaks between the time they take pre-calculus versus calculus, be it in a high school setting or, and then moving on to university, or even within high school setting, if you are using it <clears throat> from year to year, at least there's going to be summer, right? Or sometimes there is a year that students have to skip for something. So here's the topics covered by the calculus course. And these are standard topics, you know, starting with limits and then going into derivatives and then going to integration and application of integrations. And then the idea behind the course grading. So um, I've used as an example in my current school mathematics department policy, final exam 40%, 60% come from in-class grades. Uh, you know, so it's basically heavily driven by both the homework and the uh, testing. So the homework, a lot of it, we actually assign on Hawks. So um, for me and my colleagues, this is, so this is how my homepage looks like. I have uh, a new edition of pre-calculus. So, and then I have used pre-calculus before for, I don't know, maybe four or five years, I think. So this is the old edition. And then um, I have also uh, used algebra and I'll talk about that in a second. And then there are two different levels of calculus. Essential calculus basically is a single variable calculus and uh, just calculus is uh, also includes multivariable calculus. So let me first just touch base about the algebra. So this is actually a transitional course that we have used uh, in one of the schools that I work with um, to transition from algebra to pre-calculus. So the way that we used it, we have set up a, a little bit of a review for students to do individually, similar to what we're doing in pre-calculus. And then we also set up uh, testing based on that review for students to go through. And then, you know, based on the results of this test, um, you know, some students we felt were ready and some students not quite. So, uh, and that's what I was talking about, the algebra placement test. And then we have accelerated precalculus and we have different precalculus courses that we have used Hawks for. So what does the uh, precalculus transition from precalculus to calculus looks like? So this is a precalculus course. Um, so these are the topics that we felt were important for students to review and yet we didn't have to teach them. So this is something they have learned on their own. And then they should be able to utilize the uh, content of the, uh, of the site, which is you know, the learning textbook and then the practice. And then all of these are certification uh, sections. So we felt real numbers, you know, some arithmetics, exponents, notations, radicals, rational numbers, and so on. So you can see the dates. Oh, sorry. We, you see the dates that every assignment is scheduled and is set. So actually, the last two of the October, this is not part of the review. The review finishes. And you can see that over the summer, they have a month to do it. So basically, the idea is that we are not checking to see you know, if they actually do it. This is for them. This is to help the students. This is not for us as instructors to make judgment as to you know, how well they're doing, or if they're ready, or if they're not ready. Yet, there is some element of control and in the use of information that I will also address uh, in my presentation. But basically, they have about a month to do it. The schedule is set. As an instructor, you have a lot of flexibility how you're going to set it up. So you can set up due date to be flexible, meaning I could have set it up all to be done on September 11, yet I didn't want the students who are going into calculus to start reviewing in June and then you know uh, forget everything by the time they start in mid-September. 
So you see that there is the beginning date of 17th of August. Uh, and deliberately, this is the middle of August because, you know, as a department, we want the students to review and we want them to be fresh with that content by the time they start with the, uh, with the calculus course. And then we give them about two weeks. So when we are looking, so uh, on the top, you could see, so this is what the reports page looks like. So if we want to, and sometimes we do have students that come to us and say, I've spent a lot of time, I couldn't do it, I've read a lot of the material, I did a lot of practice and I haven't been able to do it, I need additional help in one way or another, you know, what can the school offer me, so on and so forth. So here, here's the information that you can see that will help you as an instructor to be able to uh, answer these kind of questions and concern. So you have, you know, great summary grades per assignments. You have uh, certification summaries. You have student profiles. You have, um, you know, all kinds of tests and lesson statistics. Um, now, what's really interesting? So you see a lot of really helpful things. So, for example, you see time per student. So, you know, obviously this is not a live screen, this is just a slide, but if I was to click on that, I would be able to see how much time a student actually spent on, uh, you know, different parts of the assignment. So sometimes it happened to me personally, um, I had a student who came to me and said, Dr. Tokar, I'm really struggling and I spend hours and hours and hours on end working on something. So I look at their time, um, you know, at their um, time per student records. And actually it turned out that the assignment in question, they only spend, I'm sure you'll believe it, 11 seconds. So I said, you know, 11 seconds is not exactly uh, you know, on and on and on time, um, you know, a never ending assignment. So the student was actually embarrassed and at the end was able to do the assignment on their own. Now, so this is what it looks like. So this is, this is a combined uh, certification for one of the students, I've removed the name. So you see that, for example, this student certified on everything except the last two sections. So number 14 and 15, they have not certified. They have made no attempt to do it and spent zero time learning, which is the textbook that's attached, practice, which is practicing similar questions. And then they actually spent seven seconds. I guess they've taken a look at it and decided it wasn't for them. So properties of exponent, they did certified. Notice it wasn't easy because they had to do four attempts. So this assignment was set to not to give them unlimited attempts on every question, but rather it was set, I think, to give them four or five attempts per question. So as an instructor, you have, um, you have a, a choice as to uh, you know, how far you, you're allowing them to go. And depending on the students and how well you know them, or if you don't know them at all, um, you can decide what you're going to give them. So clearly the student uh, had a lot of attempts. Yet what I see is that the students only spent 10 minutes looking through the uh, Hawks textbook and then spent uh, 30 minutes practicing and then 36 minutes to certify. So if I was looking here, I see that the longest it took for the student to certify was uh, question number, uh, sorry, topic number six, which is right here, quadratic equations in one variable. So what I see, what does this statistic tell me? That the student spent 55 minutes trying to certify. 22 minutes, the student, and had two attempts, 22 minutes was spent on reading and no time at all was spent on trying to practice similar question. Now, the next, uh, one of the next topics that the student had a lot of difficulty with is topic number eight, which is rational expressions and equations. So I see that it took 52 minutes for a student to certify. And I do see that the student didn't really read much about it, yet tried to do similar questions. So as you can see, overall, 
um, it, the software. So all of this obviously is collected by, by Hox, um, by the platform. And uh, for me, I found it very useful having a conversation with students, uh, being able to uh, discuss productively where they need to go in order to be more successful. So here I see the students spend overall 726 minutes, which is what about uh, 12 hours. Uh, and out of these, most of the time really trying to do the questions and, and about two hours practicing and about an hour and a half reading. You know, and no time was spent in the last two sections. So I can talk about, about it with them and say, you know, Perhaps if you really struggling with this and you need to review the textbook, you need to look at the practice exercises. So um, let's see, that's another student, you know, similar idea. So I can see that, for example, here they had three attempts, uh, not a lot of time at all. Overall, nine minutes were spent trying to read the textbooks. Uh, here, there's 90 minutes that was spent overall on chapter one review. Um, and then it, it really meant that they, uh, they, you know, they only tried to certify for eight minutes. So they really tried to persevere for eight minutes on this assignment. And then at the end, we're not able to do it. So this is here we see a cumulative assignment, chapter one review, something that you would want students to be able to do because obviously we all know as instructors that cumulative assignments are much more difficult or cumulative reviews are much more difficult for students than individual topics when they can follow the, uh, you know, the pattern, the instruction. So this is what the student's view of the course looks like. So they will see, so this is from, uh, you know, this is taken from the City College of New York. I'm the instructor and sorry, and this was the demo session that I have used. So I can see that, like they can see what's gonna be due today. So for today, like whatever day they opened it, they see that there are five assignments that are not completed yet. And they see that they have 40 assignments that are going to be due later. So they could see and they can plan. So what was due today? They had real numbers, fractional exponents, radicals, polynomials, lines and graphs. They don't have to do it in order. They can choose what it is that they need to do, giving them some flexibility as to maybe starting with topics that they're more familiar with and making them more comfortable. Uh, you know, and this is, you know, continuation of that. And then it, this is what's due in weeks, which is due later. So you could see that this is set for March 21, and then the next one is in a week. So it says due in weeks. So when, let's just say, when students are practicing, when they're looking at their uh, dashboard, just like I had my dashboard, which shows all of my textbooks and all of my courses, students see when they open, they see where they can go. So this is the textbook, the learn that I was referring to. This is the practice, which is the, the which are the questions that they can do before they start certification. And then this is the mastery. So notice here, a mastery is 80%. What does it mean? It means that this specific section, not the whole test, but this specific section, section 1.2, an integer exponent, is set for students to, to, uh, to complete with 80%. 80 uh, 80% of the questions have to be completed correctly. That's your choice as an instructor. You can decide, well, uh, there's a particular topic that I feel very important. I want them to certify at... I want them to achieve mastery of 90%, 100%, 95%, percent Maybe there's something that you just want them to sort of see. You can decide, well, maybe 70% is okay. And again, that's going to be up to you as an instructor. This is the learning mode. This is what the question, this is what the textbook looks like when the student wants to learn. When they click on it and it will say, well, you want to learn Here's, here's the general information about the exponents. And then you can look at the various examples and you can see that there's going to be a lot of information and a lot of examples that are presented by Hawks. Very, very helpful to students. 
um, for them to be able to either review or you know, review, relearn, or potentially maybe there's something that they've never learned to be able to do it. So the tutor mode is what their practicing is. So here you can see step-by-step -step solution, how to do a problem. So it gives them both the rule that is used, like here, for example, distributing exponents, and it also allows them to do you know, parts of the problem while part of the problem is actually done with them, oh, excuse me, for them. Uh, the keypad, how to enter certain things. So you know, um, this is what it looks like. So when they are, um, you know, so when they're practicing or when they are uh, getting ready to certify it, notice that they have save and end practice, or they don't have to save it. If they see that they're not really doing well, they don't want to save this, they can discard the session. But also what's really important for students is that they can, uh, they can save part of the practice. They don't have to finish 100% of it. They can stop at any point, and, but that's actually depends on you as an instructor. I like for my students to be able to stop because you know, who knows how long it took them and uh, I don't really want them to restart the session every time. Notice, for example, here, this particular section has 20 questions. And here at question number eight, the student maybe decided that they're going to stop and they're going to, you know, take, excuse me, take a break, or uh, maybe they have to go and do something else. So this is their pre-certification. Again, this is their practice. Notice they can continue, they can redo. So again, there's a lot of, sorry. Interesting. This is their certification section, the two, as I said, the 20 questions. So notice the hearts on the right on the top. So the hearts are the, um, the hearts are sort of like get out of jail card. So you can decide, okay, I want my student to be able to skip something. Like if there is maybe in the section, there'll be a couple of really difficult questions and it's okay if they skip some because the software itself will not allow them to move forward until they perfect the question they're on. So if I keep getting question number one wrong, I will not be able to see what question number two looks like until I get that one correctly. However, here I have four hearts. So I can say, you know what? Question one is really difficult. I want to see what question two, three, and four look like. And I still have a couple of you know, lives, so to speak. So I'm going to utilize that as I'm moving forward. So let's just say I click on it. And then once I used it, my, my hearts, my out of jail cards will go down by one. And I have four of them in this particular, and this is just an example uh, in this particular section uh, to be able to skip over a problem. Like for me personally, I wouldn't set up that many hearts, that many, you know, get out of jail cards because out of 20, that's a lot. That's like a fifth of these questions. So, because I would want them to do the majority of the question, usually for me, uh, you know, I like 85%, something like this. But then again, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. You know, and here when students finished uh, certifying, it says finish certification. Uh, how they did it, they got 16 correct and they still had two strikes left. That means that out of the 16 hearts, they only used two of them. So they got 16 out of 18 correctly. It took them 15 minutes and 41 seconds, and it took them on the average 52 seconds per question. And by the way, notice it says to-do list and retake. To-do list is what they still need to do in terms of like it sends them back to see what, what else is assigned. Retake is if they really want to perfect whatever content, they are able to do this over without losing the certification. So certification is theirs. theirs. They've certified, so it counts. If you want to count it for a grade, if you want to count it for a credit, but 
uh, they are still having ability to redo the questions, uh, to perfect everything as much as they want. All right. And then uh, this was uh, a practice test that I have assigned, that I have set up for students uh, to see, to get an idea, you know, of what uh, the actual test is going to look like. So there's a sample question. I said, and this was one for calculus, actually, you know, this, this is just to give you an idea that you can do it. And uh, it said, find the derivative of the following equation. There's an answer. Now notice the time. The time looks weird, right? 1,263 uh, hours, 33 minutes, 20 seconds left. This is how much time left. Why? Because I gave them unlimited amount of time to complete it. Because this is for them to practice. Maybe, uh, by the way, before I forget, what's really, really great about Hawks is that when your students get Hawks license, that software will follow them as long as Hawks as a company exists. It doesn't expire. It's not valid for a year. It's valid for life. And I actually had students who went on to further courses and then needed to review something and they remembered it because I always emphasize it. But that's, a, that's a really great thing to have. And they went back into their account and they actually were able to utilize the textbooks and the review practice uh, to be able to, uh, you know, and, and some tests and to be able to actually uh, review the material they needed. In addition to it, the students can actually set up their own practice tests, which is also a rather unique feature here. And then they can choose the topic and the software will generate questions for them to practice. And I had a lot of, a lot of students that want to accelerate actually do that. So here's the practice test, as I said, you know, unlimited. So, um, you know, what happened? So here there was one attempt. 16 minutes, uh, you know, total time taken was 16 minutes. And then it wasn't timed. Notice that out of not timed, uh, correct 14 out of 25, because it wasn't for a grade, it was just about the practice. And you can see seven correct, uh, you know, and then you can also assign partial credit if you want uh, to give students. So you can see the results by uh, a graph you know, through a pie chart, or you can see, uh, you know, uh, a bar graph, you can uh, see, um, uh, you know, you can see your results in, in various formats. And again, you can go back and actually look at, the, at all of the details. As an instructor, you know, you have different sections and you have different tests that you're creating. And then from year to year, if you're using the software and the software regenerates questions randomly and also changes the, uh, the order of the questions, it is very helpful to keep them. So here you can see I have capped the practice tests. Also, if you have students at either university or you know whichever organization you're working for, a high school that, that have extended time, you can set up different time for different students. And notice here I said chapter three in class test and then chapter three extended time. Chapter four in class test, practice test, and then extended time for students with extended time. And some of it I shared because I share with other instructors and some of it I didn't because maybe it was just for my students. And then you can also lock it so, you know, nobody can actually open it. Nobody can see it. Nobody can, sorry, nobody can uh, actually, the students are not going to be able to use the test until you unlock it, but also until you, if you can, uh, until you give students the, the passcode. You can set passcode to nothing if you decide that you just want the practice test to be open. Usually I do that for practice tests, but for real tests, of course, I want them to be password protected. You know, and here you see that I have uh, used the practice test and then I had assign it and you can see that you can assign it to different sections. So you, you won't 
be giving a test, the same test to different sections. Uh, the reports in a different format, uh, really, really helpful is detailed student grades right here. And also, as I said, time per students. Like we, as instructors, we found these to be extremely helpful. So this is your, again, this is the report on the average time of student per topics. You know, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, let's see. Um, your outcomes, as you can see, there is a lot of information here. So you, again, you can, you can decide how you're going to use whatever it is that you're going to set up. So for example, you can say, Practice quizzes, not included in the grade. Practice tests, not included in the grade because you can set up your own grade book here. Uh, your lessons, you can include them. The quizzes, you can decide you include it and then you can give them particular. So I didn't set up the grade book here, but I know that you can and you can you know, set up different weights uh, for uh, different assignments. Uh, again, another one of the of, of the assignments per student. Notice you can have some that are on time. You can have some late. You can set a penalty if you want to. That's just a lot of you know uh, different, uh, a lot of various uh, statistics that we've collected. And, you know, as we said, we continue to incorporate teaching software into the math courses. We continue to monitor correlation between the time spent on learning and practicing and student success. We continue to monitor the changes in students' outcome. We're collaborating with other colleges and between different courses. And of course, continuing training the faculty, which is really exactly what we're doing now. So as for the presentation, I think I am done. So if there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to um, go back to the original slide. Okay, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the Q&A module. And we would be happy to answer them. But as you are uh, thinking about the questions, I just want to say that we started, you know, we meaning the department started incorporating Hawk software for this review over the summer, like this brief two week review, giving students a chance to do it for the last maybe four or five years. And it's changed tremendously the success of the students and how comfortable they are going from their pre-calculus course in the previous year into the calculus course, because one of the complaints that we often hear from students is, but I don't remember, I'm not sure I've learned it, uh, I'm sure I haven't learned it. Um, and this really helped us to, um, you know, to, uh, to remedy these kind of conversations. All right, uh, Ina, do you have any closing remarks that you would like to make? I would say that if you guys are interested in trying Hogs, Hogs gives, you know, helps you set up the uh, instructor account for free. You don't have to pay for it. They're very, very helpful in terms of, um, you know, helping you set it up, helping you learn about various uh, functions of the software. The online chat is actually really amazing, like really, really amazing for both instructors and for students. Uh, the people are always there. It's always live, I believe. I, I don't know, you know, I haven't used it uh, maybe this year, but I know that during COVID and pre-COVID it was 24 seven, as it's still the case, the chat. So, you know, I mean, from my experience, you could chat with uh, tech support 24 seven and students have been able to do it. So it's a really great thing to try and see if you like it. And if you think it's gonna be helpful, we found it very helpful and we continue using it. 
Thank you so much. All right, that looks like all the time we have. Thank you, Ina, and thank you all for attending today. If any of you or your fellow instructors are interested in presenting for our Learning and Growing webinar series, please submit your proposals to the Learning and Growing website, which I'm going to go ahead and link into the chat right now for easy access. All right, and we will be emailing you a link of the recording for today once it is available, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.